So welcome to another uh, AMVA interview session. We have a very special guest with us here today. He is a great contributor to the program and he's one of the board members of AMVA, Mr. Jerry Trimble Jr. How you doing, Joe? Good to, good to good see to you. Good to be here. Thank you. So, um, are you comfortable? Good, man. I'm yeah, good. All right. So uh, just before we start, I just wanted to say you had a great time last week. Yeah, it was, was fun. awesome, fun. Uh, Hope to do it again yeah. someday. And you guys did a fantastic, uh, fantastic oh, thank job. You. It was good stuff. Yeah. Really oh, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. So let's start things off. Okay. Um, what inspired you to pursue a career in Hollywood? After you, we, you know, you did your fighting thing, and, and you said, "I want to go." Yeah. To Hollywood. Um, you know, it's funny when I got into the martial arts. Uh, actually, the whole movie business. I knew I wanted to do something in the movie business when I was about eleven, because I would have these silent films that I would put sound and music with my record player and my reel reel tape deck and I would edit things together and then I would write movies. This is 11 years old. And then uh, after being bullied forever and ever, I got into Bruce Lee and got into the martial arts. So that sidetracked me from the movie business at 11 years old to movie <laughs> business. So then after I uh, won two world titles, I there was something gone, something missing that it was like I, I didn't have the passion for fighting anymore. And there was a promoter that I signed with Jim Abernathy, Jim Abernathy Sports, who said that he was going to send me to Hollywood. And when everything kind of wouldn't, you know, just didn't feel right fighting anymore, something was missing. And um, one day it clicked, and I went, "I'm going to Hollywood, and I'm going to be in the movies." <laughs> and that was, you know, the passion that I had eleven that I got sidetracked by being in the martial arts. So it was a, a long-lasting uh, desire to be. I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew I was going to be in the movie business. But um, you know, uh, when I was in the martial arts, we would take, uh, we would get our friends that were martial artists, and we would shoot many movies with action scenes and stuff. And then, uh, yeah, man. So in nineteen, I think it was nineteen ninety, nineteen eighty nine was my last fight. And then uh, I packed up, sold everything I owned, and moved to California. Yeah. That must have been one heck of a move. You that, know. that was yeah, it was, it's crazy. Now, see, that's funny because. My, the, one part of my life is similar to that because mm -hmm. I actually used to do martial arts myself. Oh, really? What style? It was uh, Kung Fu. Nice, nice. I think it was Wu-Tang Mountain. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> I just needed something to do, an right. extracurricular thing, but I never I never was too into it. Yeah. And then eventually I just I stopped. Right. And, and now I'm here learning how to make movies. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's kind of... Wow. Yeah, it, is it coincidental? <laughs> uh, you know what? It's, we're all destined for greatness, I believe. And I think one thing that the martial arts, maybe it, what it did for me was it taught me how to set goals. It taught me how to go after dreams and, and taught me how to pursue things and never give up. That's one of the great things about the martial arts that it taught me. And maybe it did the same thing for you. And, and it, it, I think what, 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 one of the cool things that the martial arts does for people is it, 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 it triggers those inner talents, those inner gifts that we all have, and it, it helps you to come out of your shell, and it helps you to pursue things that you probably normally wouldn't pursue. Hmm. I mean, it's, you know, it's, 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 the, any style of martial arts, uh, you know, everybody's got their own unique style, but it's, uh, it's a pretty cool thing that, you know, enables you to kind of bring out your talents and your gifts and your, what makes you champions, <laughs> you know. Well, one thing's for certain, we didn't make little movies. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, all right, moving on. What are some of the perks of being an actor and a stuntman? Being an actor and a stuntman. Um, probably the biggest, I mean, it's not really a perk, I mean, is that you get to do what you love doing. I mean, being able to act and being able to do stunts, that's, I mean, that's the biggest perk you can get. Um, uh, you just, you're doing what you love, you know. Uh, they say the definition of success is doing something that you love so much that you do it for free and then becoming so good at it that you get paid for it, that's acting and stunts right now for me. Well, you know, there's, there's that saying, yeah. you know, um, you don't really truly, you're not really working if you love doing what you're doing. Exactly, you know? yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, some of the other perks would be uh, you get invited to special events. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was great. It was a plus. Yeah, Lisa invited us to the uh, uh, Actors for Autism Reach for the Stars event. That was incredible. Yeah, we get invited to quite a few events, um, you know, both here in LA and, and uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. 
um, people notice you, they come up and ask you your autograph, it's kind of cool, and when they tell you, hey man, you inspired me, you know, these movies that you did where you did the karate, and it, it inspired me to get into martial arts and to go for my dreams. That's probably the, that's a great feeling. That's a really good feeling. That's, that's yeah, feeling. I mean, when you can inspire somebody to do something with their lives, uh, there's no greater thing than that. Uh -huh. I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah, there's a lot of other perks. I mean, yeah, it's you, you, you get paid good money for it. You know, you get to play. It's like being a kid. You know, I mean, you're getting being a kid. Yeah, you're being a kid. Before. You get, well, I mean, when you being you, a kid. Yeah, when you're playing a role, you get you're being a kid. You get to play. You get to you know you get to pretend. That's the coolest thing. I mean, you know what better thing. Fun thing to do than that, you know, be a kid. Yeah, I can't think of anything funner. Oh, no, that's <laughs> I great. don't think that's good stuff. Yeah. Well, when you guys were on stage on oh. the uh, Godfather scene, you guys looked like, you know, you dude, you were great. Al Pacino, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good yeah. old Al Pacino. You're all over Al Pacino. <coughs> um, so, all right. Um, what would you say is the acting role that you remember being the most fun? The one that you look back and you say, "Man, I had a, I had a lot of fun oh. doing that one." No question, Heat. Heat. Al Pacino. Al Pacino, Al Pacino, Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny how I got that. Um, I, they were casting for Heat in, in um, uh, Los Angeles, and I was at the gym, and a buddy of mine says, Hey, man, you know they're casting for Heat. You need to go down. They're casting for these cops. And I went, Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so I, about three or four days later, I see the guy, and he goes, Hey, did you, 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 I'm telling you, man, they're casting right now. You need to go down. And I said, oh, okay, and he gives me the casting director's telephone number, and I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm like, I, uh, you know, I, I had a big agent at the time, and nothing was happening. And I figured, well, my agent, you know, if I'm not going in for the audition, my agent's not, you know, there's no roles available right. for me, which was ridiculous. That was leaving my career into somebody else's hands, which you should never do that. you got to go out and take the bull by the horns. <laughs> So then I threw the number away, and then like four or five days later, I see another buddy of mine says, hey, man, I just auditioned for Heat, and I went, you're kidding me. So it kept coming and coming into my head. It kept coming into my presence. And then I see the guy who gave me the number, and I said, dude, give me that number again. <laughs> and uh, he gave me the number. I went home. I called the casting directors, and I said, listen, blah, blah, blah. They brought me in. I met uh, Bonnie Timmerman. I, I read for the, uh, one of the roles, and um, she introduced me to Michael Mann, and I was like, wait, hold on. So then she calls me at home going, Jerry, uh, I just want to say, I sent her some flowers saying thank you, thanks for the flowers, and I want to say that you have a very nice role in this movie. And then I had 18 weeks on a 22-week shoot with working with Al Pacino all the time. And it yeah, was like, and, uh, oh. and Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer, and Val Kilmer. Robert De Niro. De Niro, that I met. That must have been fun. Well, it was because we didn't have this, we were in the same scene, the, the shootout scene at the, yeah. uh, at the bank, so we weren't communicating with Val Kilmer except for when we were walking back and forth doing the shootout scene back and oh, forth. Oh, you got to, you got to shoot? Yeah, it was the the, the bank robber scene. I got shot in uh, in, in in the the first rewrite or the first uh, uh, script version. My character died, and then Michael Mann rewrote it, and then I lived. And it was like, yeah. So I got shot in the shoulder, and uh, and I lived, and it was cool, you know. But I uh, didn't really get to hang out with De Niro on set, but I met him at the firing range, and it was I was on this end with my de deputy. We each had a de personal yeah. deputy sh to show us shooting, and then I looked to the right, and I'm like. There's Robert De Niro. Excuse me, I'll be right back. <laughs> so, so I get out and introduce him. And I'm like, no, no, I'm like, dude, hey, how you doing, man? Nice to meet you. And he's like, hey, call me Bobby D. And I'm like, whoa. I'm like, that's my heart's pounding on my chest. I'm like, Robert De Niro, oh my God. It was the ma major, major, major blessing. So every time I go, every day I went on set, I was like, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. Yes, thank you, God. I go to my trailer, hop up my knees and go, thank you, God, thank you. And it just... You know, it took a while to really sink in that I was actually working on Heat with Michael Mann, Robert De Niro, Val Kilmer, and um, uh, uh, Al Pacino. You know, it was, it was a major blessing. So that was my, yeah, I need another one of those. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay. Now, are there any movies you would have liked to have done stunt work for? Um, you know what? I enjoy stunts, don't get me wrong. I enjoy stunts. Uh, Vic and Andy Armstrong, two of the top stunt coordinators in the business, they have hired me in a lot of their movies. Charlie's Angels, Mission Impossible 3, uh, War of the Worlds. Uh, these guys have been a major blessing, and uh, I am eternally grateful. But um, uh, like I did Green Hornet, and I had dialogue. I like, to, I like, instead of doing just strictly stunts, which is cool, I'll take stunts, and I enjoy doing fight scenes, that's my forte, I enjoy doing action acting roles, you know, where I get to talk, get dialogue, and do some action. That to me is the best. 
to doing stunts alone, that's cool. Acting alone, that's cool. But when you get to do action and dialogue, yeah. action, acting, ah, uh, that's like, that's dream stuff to me. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You, met, you mentioned that Tom Cruise can, um, in Mission Impossible, yeah. he, he, he showed some pretty good skills even though he's not a... Yeah, Tom Cruise really was fighter. great to work with. You know, I mean, he was so cool. I had, uh, I was, I, I worked, it, we did the fight scene, it was about two and a half weeks. And it was really cool. For one fight scene? For one fight scene. Just, it was just Tom and I. After, it was right at the very ending, when, right before he go rescues his girlfriend. It was that fight scene in the, um, um, it was in Chinatown, I think, yeah. And um, it was a great, it was a great fight scene. And um, <laughs> Tom was great. I mean, he did the whole fight scene himself. They didn't put a stunt double in at all. I mean, I was, I was pretty impressed. Yeah, that guy could move. He could move and groove. And, and when they said cut, boom, he was just talking like just a nice guy. Nicest guy in the world. Vic Armstrong was the uh, stunt coordinator. J.J. Uh, Abrams was the director. And it was... Uh, was J.J. Abrams? Yeah, he directed it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a blast. It was so cool. And the cool way that I... It, it was funny because J.J. Uh, Abrams was looking for the guy to do this fight scene. It was a one-on-one -on -one fight scene. And... Um, uh, he had all the stunt guys lined up. There was like nine of us lined up, and he's walking down, and Vic Armstrong's walking behind him, the stunt coordinator. J.J. Abrams is looking at the guys, and he looks at me. He's walking, looking at the guys, he looks at me. He's walking away, he walks all around, he walks down, he goes, you. Boom, and I went, Whoa. yeah, yeah, <laughs> booyah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, two weeks, two and a half weeks of a fight scene with Tom Cruise. Hang with the man. It was cool. It was a, right, so another blessing. Two and a half, so two and a half weeks to do like one fight scene. Like, I think we should all take note of that yeah. work work ethic. Yeah, that's yeah. something we should take an yeah. example of, right cool. there. And what did you do in World of Worlds? Uh, World of the Worlds, I was uh, I was just it was strictly stunts. The big uh, uh, the dock scene where the boat right. where the people were jumping off the docks. I was one of the guys, you know, hey, hey you know, trying to freak out and live. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, you know if you. If you Blank, you couldn't see me, but yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, well, we pause it just right. Yeah, see you. it's like, there he is, yeah. <laughs> That's a Kodak moment. <laughs> so, we understand that you are a youth motivational speaker. Yes. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I. Uh, <clears throat> it's funny, I've been, um, um, I got into martial arts at 13 years old uh, for being bullied. And uh, I... Once I got into the martial arts, I, it just, I clicked and I trained six days a week and I put the time in. And it was like six days a week and I wanted to be the fastest kicker in the world. And I wanted to do this and wanted to do that. And, and you are saying, one of the fastest. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. 118 I, miles per hour. That's that was, uh, your, yeah, that was, was the hook kick? It was, yeah, uh, yeah it was a, a hook, kick. hook kick, which was my, my, you know, my trademark kick. And um, I started doing public speaking at high schools and elementary schools while I was about 14. And next thing you know, I... I started connecting with the crowd to the point where it was really cool. And then I added motivation to it. And I've been doing it since I was about about 14 years old. And then now I pursued it as a, a, a more of a little bit more full time. And now what I do is I travel to high schools, elementary schools, and, and nonprofit organizations. And I talk about my story of being bullied and overcoming my fears. And I have them face their fears. And at the end of the whole, the whole deal with the kids, um, uh, I'll have them come up and I'll have them break boards. And I'll have them, you know, I'll write the, write the name of the fear on the board. And then uh, I'll, you know, have them look at the board and say, okay, what's your fear? They'll go, failure. And I'm like, okay, okay, boom, failure. And I'll write failure on the board. And I say, okay, now listen, every single time that you think that you Whoa. might fail at something, let it go, let it go, let it go. And I said, you're, this is, you're not going to fail anymore. This is it. Never again. Those who think they can and those who think they can are both right. And you can, you can, you can. Eliminate that negative thought. Boom, they break the board. They're like, hi, and then I sign it and date it, and then I say, every time you think of failing, every time that word pops into your head, boom. And I said, the only way that you're a failure, failure is if you quit, if you right. give up, yeah. if you if you don't succeed at something, to learn from it. You know, it's you know, it's sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. That's the motto. Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. It's not sometimes you win, sometimes you fail, sometimes you lose. The only way you lose, the only way you fail, is if you just totally quit and give up. That's when you become a failure. You know, you don't ever give up. You just, you might not succeed at it, but you learn from what you did, so the next time out, you have a better chance. And if you don't succeed at it again, you just keep trying. Look at Thomas Edison. My God, he had the strong enough intention. You got to have an intention. Right. He had a strong enough intention that he wanted to be able, wanted us to be, wanted everyone to be able to see in the dark. <laughs> but he didn't and succeed. He didn't, he didn't Yeah, he didn't succeed. What is it? 
10,000 times? He kept going. Whew. That's determination, man. 10,000 times? Yes. So I go around and that's, that's my purpose in life. You know, acting and stunts and producing, that's, I love doing that. That's, you know, but um, my purpose in life is, is inspiring people. You know, that's what I love doing most. Yeah, there's, I, a, yeah. there's a saying, um, you know, it doesn't matter how many times you fall as long as you can get, get up. up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get off that horse, get back on it. It's when you give up and you <laughs> quit, you know, is when you, you're a failure. Nobody should ever be a failure. Nobody should ever quit and give up. Ah, it's fingernails on a chalkboard. <laughs> Oh, it's like the word oh, C A N apostrophe T. I hate that word. You know? It's, uh, yeah. Eliminate that word. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, here's a fun one. Yeah. How did you get the name Golden Boy? Oh, wow, that's funny. <clears throat> God. I, yeah, um, in the 80s, you know, the, uh, I, I would always wear, and my mom, it was my mom's fault. Let me blame it on my mom first. <laughs> love you, mom. Love you, mom. <laughs> My mom, for Christmas, I'd always get rings. Uh, I had a JT ring, it was gold ring, diamonds. I had a, a Star David, um, I'm half Jewish, my mother's Jewish, so they say, you're Jewish, I forgot about it. And then I, so I'd have all these rings, I had four or five, you know, three rings on one hand, two rings on another, I had gold bracelets, I had gold chains, and then I went to, went to Florida one weekend, um, Daytona Beach, and came back. And I was dark, man. I was dark. I came in with my gold chains, and somebody yelled out, It's the Golden Boy! Aww. And my train, because we were looking for a name. And it was like, I was called everything from Treacherous Tremble to Tricky Tremble to Thumper. Uh, just, and, it was, and I went, I looked at my trainer. He looked at me. We high fived each other. He goes, You got a name. You're the Golden Boy. You're Jerry Golden Boy Tremble from here on out. And I went, Ooh, I like that. And that was it, man. It was history. Just yeah. for a bunch of rings. For a bunch <laughs> That's it, man. Thanks, Mom! Thanks, yeah, that's mom. my mom's thought. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so, okay, here's another fun one. Mm -hmm. Would you ever compete in a tournament again? In a movie. <laughs> in a movie. Oh, so yeah, you know, you know what? Yeah. Have cameras. Well, it's funny because when I moved to California, when I retired, officially retired in 90, I said, you know, I'm done, I'm done. I'm going to go to California, I'm going to be in the movies. And then when I got, got here, it was, it, we're going on three months, nothing happened. You know, some people takes 25 years. I'm like, man, three months, nothing's happening. You know, I should have waited a little longer. But I, I started training, and I said, I'm going to fight again. And then I booked two lead roles in two films. Boom, I said, I'm done. Then I officially retired. But, you know, throughout the years, people say, you're going to fight? Hey, would you fight again? Would you fight again? I, you know what? No, no, it, it's gone. I would love to do a boxing movie where I get to play the part of a boxer. Cause I, I, well, there's I, a new boxing movie that's coming out. Soon with uh, Stallone and uh, De Niro. Oh, De Niro, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, yeah. Years ago. Yeah, so, yeah, I won't compete again, but uh, I hope one day to do a boxing movie where I get to show my skills as a boxer. I think I'm a better boxer than a kickboxer. I don't know, I just, yeah, I, I, I you know, yeah, yeah. But they're kind of similar. The they, yeah, they are, but it, it's funny. With kickboxing, it's boxing in hands. It's punching and kicking. Right. But boxing, I don't know, it's... It's I don't know they they're similar in the fact that you know they both have the upper body same thing with the upper body but boxing to me I love I love jumping in the ring and sparring a boxer than I do jumping in the ring and kickboxing I don't know why <laughs> even though I won world titles in kickboxing I enjoy boxing better I've always enjoyed boxing better I don't know why maybe I should have pursued boxing I don't know it was um, I just happened to be able to do stuff with my legs that at the time nobody else could do and you know throw them in ways that nobody could throw them and knock out people. Oh, that must be a good feeling. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was. Now I'm a peaceful warrior and I'll do anything to provoke, to, to not fight, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, so, can you briefly tell us how you stay in shape for your line of work? Any disciplined health uh, regimens? Well, I mean, everything takes discipline, you know. Um, you know, in, in, especially being an actor and a stuntman, you have to always be ready you know, for anything that comes up. You know, Benjamin Franklin said it best. It's better to prepare for an opportunity that may never come than have an opportunity come and be unprepared. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm in training. You know, I get a project that I'm shooting here that I'm uh, I'm shooting this weekend that I'm not at liberty to speak about. Mm -hmm. The director says, it's hush hush. But um, uh, I've been training. I've been doing a little P90X off and on. Oh, I heard uh, about that. Yeah, P90X I heard is pretty it's, it's, really man, it's, 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 it's some intense stuff. And what it does, it's like CrossFit. It shocks the body. So I'll do some P90X, I'll do some of my own workout, 
cardio, what I do is I do something, my own little thing called funky boxing, which is, um, <laughs> it's about, funky boxing. It, what I do is I'll find music that's got really, it's pretty fast beat, bum, 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 bum. And, and I actually timed it once, I'll punch for about maybe 30 to 40 minutes, non-stop punching. I average about 12 to 15,000 punches in, in a 30 minute period of time. And, and what it does is it, I'll try to keep the beat of the music and, and just keep punching and keep flowing and keep moving and work the footwork and everything else, which challenges me. I can't run, I, just, I can't, forget that word. I'm unable to run because it's too boring. Um, I'm able, unable to do the bike because it's too boring. I have to That's do something. That's what I do. Hey. Yeah, well, no, no, no. It's, well, see, some now, you know, the, there's there's things that people like to do. Yeah, if you like to do it, knock yourself out. It's just it's too boring for me. Yeah, I need something to challenge me. And, and when I'm shadow boxing, funky boxing, you know, you know, to sit there and, and to have you know a beat that you got to, bam, 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 bam. Yeah, maybe I'll show it to you afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, I. It's, it's, I'm telling you. If it's, you want to show, you yeah. want to show anybody here, you show me. You dig it, man. Yeah, yeah. Show me. So it's cool, and then I and I and I juice. I juice constantly. Yeah, uh, organic. You know, don't do. You know, make sure it's organic. Fruits and vegetables. I juice twice a day. I uh, take a, a supplement line called Genesis Pure, uh, which is organic, natural, uh, liquid nutrition, and um, yeah, I mean you got to. You know, we only live once. You got to take care of the temple that God gave right. us. So. Uh, you know, uh, it's uh, it's crazy. You, you can't pollute it, and you know, with all the toxins and all the junk and all the crap in the world today, yeah, yeah it's like there's more toxins in this room than there is outside. With the carpet and the paint, <gasps> oh, oh, just kidding. But yeah, just so you got to take care of yourself. You know, gotta gotta feed the temple the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, thankfully I do. So yeah, you don't good have to worry you, about good me. For you, man. Good for you. <laughs> is there any advice? that you can give to young students like ourselves uh -huh. who are aspiring to be actors and or stuntmen. Okay. Um, take care of yourself. Take care of your body. Take care of your mind. Exercise the mind. Do brain training. I would highly suggest doing brain training. I do brain training. You know, they got lumosity. Um, uh, brain training. Brain training, yeah. Brain training online. Yeah, memory exercises, memory skills. And, uh, yeah, brain training. You know, people think well, they train the body, but they don't need to train the brain. Ridiculous. Train the brain, brain training. Good. There's a lot of different brain training programs. It'll exercise the mind. It'll create new neural pathways and you'll really strengthen that mind. So you got to exercise the mind, the body, and the spirit. Uh, meditation, I highly recommend. Never give up. If you have friends that are negative towards your goals and dreams, either do one of two things. <laughs> Get them help or get rid of them. You don't need to hang around with people that are negative. Learn as much as you can. Study and learn. Grow. As an, it's funny because when I went to school, man, I didn't have teachers that said you read, read uh, English. I'm like, ah, I know how to write. I know how to. You know, I didn't read as a kid. I didn't really get into English. Now as a writer, as a producer, uh, you know, as an actor, history, I mean, as an actor, wow, history is, is, is so important. Yeah. You know, the different characters in history. Um, that was my favorite subject. Yeah. It's, it's probably just, one of the only subjects I was good at. Oh, man, I'm telling you. You just keep learning, keep growing, don't give up. Um, write in a journal, you know, take acting classes, take acting classes. Al Pacino still takes acting classes. Still takes the acting classes. A legendary actor. Yeah, man. He, I mean, come on. Nobody's perfect. Everybody, you, you know, you can. Everyone can always grow. You know, grow, 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 grow as much as you can. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Right. You know, and don't quit. Whenever you quit, the haters win. Don't give them that satisfaction. You know. I promise yeah. you, we won't. Dig it. <laughs> yeah. And finally, what made you want to join Actors for Autism? Um, what well, was it? Was like I think in the nine. It was in nine, the late nineties, maybe ninety eight, ninety nine. Uh, my wife Amy Dolans had a, an acting school called that she did out of her home called Theatrics for Kids, and it was a pretty cool school, successful. And there were there were times where there were a few autistic kids that came in. Right. They were a little bit too much for her to handle in the class. So she turned them over to me, <laughs> and with my hyper attitude, and today, you know, <laughs> we clicked, and I was able to connect with them, to get through them, to help them in a way that was like, wow, I, my mom, my wife's like, honey, you have a special gift, wow. She goes, the way that you communicate with these kids is amazing. 
So every time we would have autistic kids come into the class, boom, I would teach them private classes. Wow. And, and it was funny because we would do, we'd do little skits, little movies, and I'd film it. And this was in the beginning of my years of learning how to edit. And uh, it would make drastic positive changes in their whole outlook on life and just their attitude. It was just the coolest thing. And then I heard about Actors for Autism through a friend. I came down, met Elise, and I went, I want to be involved. This is really cool. <laughs> and then, yeah, the rest is history. And I've been uh, part of it uh, you ever since. You just never know. You just never know. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. And here we are, man. And here, here we are, Joe. Here we are. Al Pacino, yeah. Al Pacino, dude, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you me, for man. being here. Yeah, thank you. Um, have you had a good time? I had a great time, man. Had a thank good you. time, and yeah. uh, we'll be seeing you some other yeah. time. And, and I, I, bought, I popped back and forth uh, from here to Vancouver, um, and so whenever I come back into town, man, um, I'll definitely stop by and um, yeah, maybe we'll yeah, do, please. Some, do some playing. Yeah, and, we could always yeah, use, uh, do some skits and fun and play like kids. Yeah, uh, 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 uh. that'd be a blast. That'll be great, right, guys? Yeah. Be kids? Dig it, yeah. Be kids again? Be kids again. Uh, uh, yeah. Be Don't ever grow up. Can't ever grow up. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what can you do? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for right, coming. Man. My pleasure.